Hello and welcome to this brief video on solving equations with powers where the variable appears once only. Just as a quick recap, how do we solve equations? So if we had like x plus 3 equals 7, we want to get x on its own, that's what it means to solve this equation. Well, what we'd want to do is to get rid of that plus 3, so we have x on its own. So to get rid of plus 3, we do the opposite. So we'd subtract 3 from both sides, and then we'd know on the left hand side the minus 3 gets rid of the plus 3, leaving just x. And if we subtract 3 from 7, we end up with 4. And so x was 4. And that seems to work because 4 plus 3 is indeed 7. Now the only reason I did that is to illustrate with this next example. If I had, say, x squared equals 25, now you might think, well, what number squared gives you 25? And think of an answer to that. But we could also think of it as trying to get rid of that squared. Remember with this, we want to get x on its own. And so we did the opposite of things to get rid of the stuff around the x. So if we want to get rid of that squared, we do the opposite. We square root both sides. The opposite of squaring is square rooting. So if I square root both sides, that gets rid of the squared, just leaving x. And then if we square root 25, you get 5. Now there's actually a second solution. Well, we know that 5 squared gives you 25, but is there another number square that gives you 25? Well, yes, there is. It could also be minus 5, because minus 5 times minus 5, or negative times negative is positive, so it would give you positive 25. If I say had x cubed equals 8, then we do the opposite of cubed, that's cube rooting. So we cube root both sides, so when we cube root that, we get x. And when we do the cube root of 8, that's saying, well, what's cubed gives you 8. What times itself times itself gives you 8? Well, it's 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, and that's how we'd solve that. So let's do a few of these examples here. We firstly got x squared is equal to 16. So I want to get rid of that squared, so I square root both sides. And the square root gets rid of that squared, leaving x. And square rooting this, we get 4 or minus 4. And another way you could write this answer is plus or minus 4. And that plus or minus symbol means exactly what we've got above. It could be positive 4 or it could be negative 4. We've got a nice, concise way of writing that. Question 2, we've got 3x squared is equal to 12. Now this is where it's a bit harder. Now what a number of students might try to do is they sort of try to square root both sides and they think they're going to get 3x here and they'll get the square root of 12 here. But the thing is, if we think about Bidmus and what's happening to x, powers come before multiplication. So this x here, the story of what happens to x is it gets squared first and then it's been multiplied by 3 and that gave 12. So we want to undo it in reverse order. So we, we squared then we times by 3 to get 12 so we should divide by 3 first to go backwards. So we get rid of that 3 first, we divide both sides by 3. Well we have 3x squared and we divide that by 3, that gets rid of the times by 3 leaving just x squared, and 12 divided by 3 is 4, and then we just square root both sides, so x is 2 or minus 2, or I could just write it like this, plus or minus 2. Next one, we've got 2y squared plus 5 is equal to 23. Now let's think about the story of what happens to y. Well, y is getting squared, then you're multiplying it by 2, and then you're adding 5 to get 23. So we want to undo the last thing that we did first. So we want to undo that plus 5. So to undo it, we subtract 5 from both sides. So subtracting 5 gets rid of that plus 5. So we have 2y squared is equal to 23 minus 5 is 18. What was the last thing we did here? Well, y was squared, and then we multiplied it by 2. So we want to undo the times by 2 by dividing by 2. So we divide both sides by 2. And then if we divide that by 2, that gets rid of the times by 2, leaving just y squared. Divide that by 2, and we get 9. And then finally, if we square root both sides, we get y is equal to plus or minus 3. And then next one, 4 we got 2x cubed minus 4 is equal to 50. So x was being cubed, then you're multiplying it by 2, 
Then you subtracted 4 to get 50. So we want to undo the subtract 4 first because it was the last thing we did. So the opposite is to add 4 to both sides. So if we add 4, then that gets rid of the minus 4. So we have 2x cubed. That becomes 54. Then we want to get rid of that times by 2 next. So we divide both sides by 2. 54 divided by 2 is 27. And then we want to get rid of the cube. So what's the opposite of cubing? It's cube rooting. So we cube root both sides. So that gives x here. And then what's the cube root of 27? Well, what cubed, what times itself times itself will give you 27? Well, it's 3. 3 cubed is 27. And it's not plus or minus this time, because if you had minus 3, and you times it by minus 3, and then you times it by minus 3 again, negative times negative times negative would be negative. So it would be negative 27, not positive 27. So it is just 3. And then 5, we've got x squared plus 5 over 6 equals 5. Now let's think of what happened to x. x was first squared, then we added 5, and then we divided by 6. So we want to undo the divide by 6 first. We multiply both sides by 6 to undo the divide by 6. And when we do that, that gets rid of that over 6. So we're just left with x squared plus 5. A common mistake that students make is they get rid of the over 6, but then they also times the top by 6 as well. But when we times by 6, it just gets rid of over that. We don't times by 6 again. And that times 6 is 30. A lot of students accidentally forget to times the right-hand side by 6 as well. And then we want to get rid of that plus 5, so we subtract 5 from both sides to get 25. And then square root both sides, x is plus or minus 5. Now let's do this quick test your understanding question. I want you to solve 4m squared minus 10 is equal to 54. So you may want to pause the video at this point to have a go at that question. Right, hopefully you've had a chance. So let's think of what's happening to m. It's being squared first, then you're multiplying it by 4, and then you subtracted 10 to get to 54. So the last thing we did was subtract 10. So we want to undo that first by adding 10 to both sides. So we're going to have 4m squared, the minus 10 is gone because we added 10, and then add 10 to this side, we get 64. Now, m was squared, then you multiplied it by 4, so you want to undo the times by 4 next. So we're going to divide both sides by 4 to undo the times by 4. That gives you m squared. 64 divided by 4 is 16. And then we want to undo the squared, so we square root both sides. So that becomes m. And that becomes plus or minus 4. And that is the final answer. Well done if you got that right.